Hello everyone and welcome back to another final girl video for the channel. Thank you very much for the support on the first one. I appreciate giving a new game a chance. And uh, we're going to do another one today. This is not my ideal setup for playing it incidentally. I'm just using a table that's been stripped down before it gets uh, put back up for a different game. Um, long term I would like somewhere better to play than this. Especially because my dog's hairs insist on finding their way onto the table. Even though I clean it when I set the table up nightly. But for now, it's just so hard to fit it into the schedule, so I'm just I'm playing it where I can. So we're going to play another game today. We're going to once again use Laurie and Hands, because I want to try and get him this time. But we're going to change up location, and we're going to visit Creech Manor. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I'm not, I apologise. Get a bit of a closer look here. I'll simply bring it closer to the camera, rather than trying to zoom in. I haven't fully set up again, just so we can do the random stuff. I have set up the terror deck, because... Like, there's really no way to fudge it in your favour because every terror card is bad. It's a mixture of Hans's cards and Creech Manor cards. There's some window icons in Creech Manor that apply to terror cards apparently, according to uh, the rules. There's some one-way windows you can jump out of and uh, one-way jumps between certain floors like this room in the attic here. You can only go down, you can't go back up. I think that might be the only internal one other than the windows you can jump out of. Yeah. So I like the idea of hands in a big house hunting down Laurie and some other survivors that we'll see. I've already got my cards for hand, or starting hand I should say. I need to come over here though, real quick, to randomise their final health icons out of this pool here. Let's go for... Let's go for this one for Laurie. And we'll go for this one for hands. And we might actually get the chance to see what they are. Oh yeah, I've already randomised his Minor Dark Power and his Finale card. So now we just need to come over here and do the rest of the randomising. Starting with the most important part, the setup. Let's go for this one. The ladder. So we're starting up in here. Hans is in the ballroom. And we've got two victims in the attic. Two next to us. Okay, so I, I did get some advice that when you're going against hands, apparently you probably should prioritize rescuing people more than you would for other killers, just to stop him getting his bloodlust up, and then he's not doing as much damage, which makes sense to me. So this is the Creech Manor item deck, and as far as I'm aware, it's still three piles of four with the top card uh, folded up. So the garage, the attic, the closet is. Item number two for each, item number three, and then flip them over. So there's a trash can lid, which I guess is a defensive item in the garage, that makes sense. The attic has a rope ladder, and there's an energy drink in the closet, the rest of those cards discarded. Last thing to do before I set up, we draw the event card that's going to apply. I guess I could technically do this once all the victims are set up, but I might have to set up another one. So, it is going to be... Ghost Hunters, oh no. Uh, replace three victims closest to you, so that's going to be the one above me and the two in the trophy room. With special victim meeples, these victims will not follow you until one of them has been killed. Each When each one of these victims is killed, plus one bloodlust. That is terrible! That's terrible for going against hands, that's more bloodlust! Well, I'll get that set up. So as we begin the game, there is all the meeples on the board representing the victims, including the three ghost hunters who will not follow me unless one of them is already dead. I start with just two dice to roll and uh, the horror level is at four because we're fighting hands. We just pull back a little bit. That's probably a bit too much. And uh, yeah, we can get started with my first turn. So I am going to try and focus on rescuing people then, as was the advice for how to fight hands. But that Ghost Hunter event is real nasty. So we're going to start with the simple free walk from the, the hand. So let's see how the game's going to go. That's pretty good. I could turn it into a double success to move two spaces. But I think I'll just take the... Uh, let's see. I could jump out the window, but honestly that's not going to save me any time. I want to get up to the attic and rescue the people there, I think. So, speaking of the attic, how do you get to the attic? You have to go through the staircase here. That's nasty. Hmm. Actually, then I will discard two cards. I want to move two. I'm going to get rid of short rest and weak attack. So, discarded two cards. It's going to cost one time, and we can move two. I'm going to go through here. And then I'm going to play another walk card. 
and hope for a similar result. Oh, wow! Okay, I can move two for one time. I'll do it. So if I move two, I can go one, two. We still can't get to the attic until the next turn. I also want that rope ladder in the attic. It, can, it looks like it can cancel an event or a terror card for the map. Or you can make one of these window jumps permanently. Uh, you can go back up if you want to. So I'm ending my turn with two focus. I think that's fine. We can just immediately go to the shopping phase, as I'll call it, just for ease of understanding the gameplay loop. And we have four time to spend in the shop. I am going to buy... A sprint and a sprint. I'm going to buy both sprint cards, that's all four of the remaining time I had spent and then we move on to the killer phase. So Hans's basic actions prior to the finale remain the same. He attacks the tile he's in, either the final girl or a victim and kills them but he doesn't move at all so he's stuck in the ballroom so we just go straight to the panic phase, there's no panicking. Oh no, sorry, we draw a tarot card, then a panic could happen, depending on what happens. So let's see. Oh, it's one unique to the map. The windows and doors just slammed shut. If you're inside, you may not move during your next action phase. That is terrible, because I am inside. If you're outside, you can't enter the house. Then you draw another event card. Huh. So I literally can't move, so that means my next turn is going to be quite boring. But we need a new event to also apply on top of the ghost hunters. No one comes back. What goes up, don't come down. Place the skull token in the attic. All victims in the attic are killed. Whenever a victim enters the attic, they are immediately killed. You know, uh, there is a skull icon. I'll need to go look it out. It comes with this stuff for Creech Manor. So that's uh, the two victims I was heading towards to save. They're, they're just dead. And even though the killer did not directly kill them, he still gets bloodlust for them. So that's two which in turn raises the horror level by one, up to five. This is going great, just for the rest, it is, it's going great. So, I'll go look at the skull token and we roll back around to my turn. Well, the horrifying skull token is now in the attic, although the damage is already done. I'm not allowed to move during this turn, so the only thing I am gonna do is play two focus cards, I think. Hold on to those sprints for next time, which I'm still gonna need. So we'll start with E focus card. It will end up costing one, I'm sure, unless any dice are very lucky. Two conditional successes. Um, we'll just take... Well, I take the failure. If I fail, we lose two time. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to take the failure there, I think. I think. I think. And then I'm going to play the other focus card. That'll do. So we lower horror back down to four. It costs us one more time. I hope I can't use the two sprint cards I have so that is that done and then we go to the buying phase so with only three time hmm well my free cards come back but besides that let's go for a distraction a single distraction yeah I think that's what it's gonna have to be so that's all the time spent Hands his turn, he tries to attack the tile, there's no one there to die, he doesn't need to do anything, the house is quite capable of murdering everyone itself apparently. New tarot card then, it's a house specific one again, it's broken. Place the broken ladder token covering the ladder on the board. Where is the ladder on the board? Oh I think it's up into the attic, so that's actually just beneficial for me then. Okay, the ladder may no longer be used and the spaces connected to it are no longer considered adjacent. Yeah, I don't need to look at the icon then. That just means no one can go in the attic, which is a murder factory anyway. So that's fine, but unfortunately it raises horror level again, so we're back up to five. But on the plus side, nobody died. Yeah, nobody panics. So it's right back around to my turn. All right, just to do things right, I looked at the broken ladder token. Uh, my ability to repair it is in the attic, so we won't be repairing it. <laughs> Let's start with a distraction, which I really, really need to do well because I need that horror level down or we're going to have the same thing we had last time. That was a pretty cool spin. Um, need to get rid of two to count as a conditional success. I'll get rid of a short rest and a weak attack because we're not hitting him and we're not resting. So that's two cards discarded in order to lower horror by one and gain one time. So we're actually up to seven. That's good. And then we'll use a sprint. 
well, uh, all the other victims except the ghost hunters are just single victims. I'm just trying to see if there's a way for me to fandangle getting more of them. There might be actually. If I can get both sprints to work out well. So let's try this. A conditional success. Uh, I'll get rid of my two walk cards to try and count it for one. So there goes the bonus time we just got. But I can move two spaces. I'll come into the closet, take the meeple, and come back out. And then we'll play the last card in my hand, which is sprint again. Ugh, and we get zero. I can choose to move one space, even if I fail, at the cost of one health, two time, and it ends my turn. It's the end of my turn anyway. I'll do it, so we're losing one health. We lose two time, putting us down to four. But I can move one space, and I'm taking this victim with me. My goal is get to this victim and then jump out the window with both of them so that we're saved. So I'm ending my turn with no cards in hand, a bunch of them to go back into the shop after my buying phase. We've got four to spend, we just come over here real quick, the two focus cards come back and we have four. I'm going to buy a, a guard, so I have a defense card. So we have two left, I'll buy I'll buy both close calls so I have rerolls, I guess. They're just out of line of sight down here. So yeah, I'll buy both them and that's my turn. All right, back to hands. He's still not doing anything. I'm imagining he's doing the John Travolta kind of looking around and then shrugging gif. You know the one I mean. So he's doing nothing. Let's see if the house kills someone else. Oh no, it's one of his cards. Dark Feast. For every victim that is dead, hands recovers health. He's not lost any health. So all that that is is horror level going back up to five. As far as terror cards go, that's pretty okay. All right, it's going to be another defensive turn for me where I'm just playing focus cards, prepping for a big movement turn next. So I just hope the next uh, terror card isn't that scary. So we'll play focus again. Basically the same off movement turn we had already. One success, I'll take it. So one last time, which I forgot to reset again, but come down to four. And I'll pay, play the other one to do the exact same thing again, hoping for two fives or sixes. Oh wow, we got two sixes! So we lower horror again, that comes down to three, and we gain two time, which takes us up to seven. I don't need to play any of the close calls or the guards, so we're just going to go have a spend feast, I guess, in the shop. Seven time to spend, and we get a bunch of free cards back if I choose to. How many cards are here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can buy three cards at most because we can't have more than 10 in our hand. Uh, I want both sprints, so that means we have space for one more card, and that costs four, so we have three left. And with three, I'll buy a distraction. I think that's actually a decent setup. Let me make sure I've counted right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. Ten, I've done with my buying phase. We go back up to six time for next turn, and both my free cards go in the shop for purchase next time. Once again, Hans does the shrugging emote, and we draw the next terror card for him. It is one... Oh no. Hans does an additional damage for each the attack icon. He also gets two ablative health. So that is a minor dark power, so he he gets more tanky. I don't have any extra. I'll just use these again. Two of these, just to show that he has some ablative health up there. But he doesn't kill anyone, so we're still set up to hopefully rescue some people now. Alright, to start my turn... I'm going to play the distraction because if I can get horror down by two, I roll three dice minimum for my skill checks. I don't think we're going to get two fives and sixes again, but let's see. Um, okay, I just rolled four sixes in a row, <laughs> technically. So that's the horror level dropping down by two. So it's at one, which means we now roll three dice and I gain two time from that. So we're up to eight. That's, that's incredible. All right, we've got some stuff we can do here then. I need to move. I need to move with a sprint. And we are rolling three dice now because of where the horror level is that you can see down here. Which ups our odds of getting a good result, which will take one time for two uh, for three spaces. So we'll go one, take this down to here for two. We rescue two of these meeples. What will I do for that? You know, I'm going to lower the horror level again down to here. And if we were to lower it again and we can't go any lower, we gain bonus time now. That's what that means. And we will uh, heal. We'll heal the one damage I did to myself earlier. For the other meeple I rescued, you just have to trust me. Laurie's card is just out of view down here. 
So that is great. There is still other people to rescue though, and I can't go back up the way I came. So we'll play the other sprint. I want to move a lot this turn while we've got the three dice because it's not going to last. Wow! How many sixes have I rolled in a row? That is incredible! So that's uh, that's three squares again then. So one, two, um, does the foyer connect up here? It must do, right? Yeah, it must do. There's numbers there. Let's go, uh, what's in the garage? It's trash can light. It's for defense. I w I'll come over here for the third act. Oops, I'm so sorry. I murdered him. <laughs> I'll come over here. I do still have my walk cards as well. Yeah, I'll play a walk. Oh, did that use time? It did use time. So we're down to six now. So we'll play a walk card. Two conditionals and one successful. I'll just take the one success, I think. Although we don't have a search card in hand. I hadn't planned that. I can get him out. I'll walk one this way. We're going to have a turn where I can't move, but I can work on just buying a bunch of time and then maybe buy an attack card. Or a really good attack card, like Critical Blow. So we move there. That costs one time. And we'll play the other walk card and do the same again, hopefully. I just need one success. I'll take it. One success. Costs one time. We can move one space. We rescue that victim. And I will give myself... Move one space off of Laurie's card. So I can move back into the foyer right here. Is there anything else I want to play? I've got two close calls, a guard, a short rest and a weak attack. I don't need to play any of these. I think we're good to end the turn and that means we're ending with four time remaining. So if we come over here, uh, let me just check something. If Hans moves he has to move onto my square. There's no way to go upstairs other unless you're in the foyer. So I'm gonna buy a retaliate for the full four so that I have a chance to hit him if he hits me. Uh, my two focus cards come back so we can use those if need be. And then all those cards I spent in that turn, the, the two walks, the two sprints, the distraction, they now go back into the shop for future purchasing. That was a really good turn. Hands, twiddles his thumbs. We draw his terror card though. Ah, there we go. Okay, now he's moving. He's just standing there, raised the horror level by two. So unfortunately that raises it to two. So we lose one of the three dice again. We're back down to two. That's annoying. He then targets the closest victim or final girl and moves towards them twice at his current speed, which is one. He gets to me in one, although... Actually, I'm not 100% sure because he can move again and that would get him to a, a meeple. He's not attacking either way, so I'll just make it that he sees me and stops in the foyer because that's quite dramatic. I'm not 100% sure how that interaction is because... If there was a victim on the same square, he would target the victim. And the card says he has a choice between targets. But when given the choice, he always goes for victims first over final girls. So I think that would actually mean he walks up here, now that I've talked that through. I'm going to make him go up here. The victim will not panic because no one died in the square this turn. That might be wrong, but that would be how I interpret it. So it is going to be a quick turn for me because again, I can't walk anywhere. I've used all the movement cards last turn. But what we can do is try and make sure we get back to rolling three dice. So I'm going to play the focus card. We're rolling two. We just need one success, really. Ha! <laughs> Conditional success, I'll take... Oh, wait, I could use a close call. Um, I'll play a close call, and I'll just do the re-roll of one die, which means it has no penalty cost. You can re-roll it all for two time, but I'll just take the one re-roll. We'll re-roll the blank here. Ha! <laughs> and it stayed as a blank. Um, I'll get rid of short rest and weak attack. So that it counts as one success will cost us one time we lower the horror level by one and i'm back to three dice i think i'm going to play the other focus though yeah i want to try and get myself in credit because most of his cards lower uh, increase horror level so let's see what we can get we've got exactly one success i'll take it <laughs> it costs us one more time lower the horror level by one again it's now at zero that is perfect we're ending our hand we're ending with a hand of guard, retaliate, close call, and four to spend. So, with four to spend, let's come back over here. Apologies for the in-camera editing. We get back our walk cards, which is great. That gives us five in hand. I just want to run around saving people, but the annoying thing is the ghost hunters can't be saved until one of them is dead. 
so that at most there's only two other people I can save. I see an out though. So with the four, we're going to buy the two sprints. I'm going to buy the two sprints. If I can rescue three more people, I can max out Laurie's card and get her super ability. So after doing that, the, the free focuses go back into the shop as does a short rest and weak attack. For next turn, and we go see what Hans is up to. So unfortunately, here's the bit of the plan I did not consider. Hans is starting his turn on a square with a victim. He murders them because they are right there. So he kills one, his bloodlust goes up by one, he's doing two damage, still moves one, it goes up again, horror level goes up again. But that means he that person isn't there for me to rescue, which is the plan. I need him to go kill one of the ghost hunters. Uh, oh, we're a bit too far along. Come here and we're drawing a terror card for him. I think we're at the halfway point now. Hans wants me, he's always wanted me. He moves towards the final girl twice and then attacks once. Well, he's making it to me, but that's perfect because that means I get to use my retaliate card so we can smack him. Hopefully. Let me see here. Retaliate. That's a better version of guard. So, we are playing retaliate in reaction to him attacking us for two damage. We're still rolling three dice. And we got two successes. Ignore all damage from the attack and hit him for two damage. I didn't realise it was in, not in shot. There you go. So, he does no damage to us. We do two damage to him. Unfortunately, that's only enough to take out his additional power. Oh, which actually meant, I totally forgot about that, yeah, so he would have been doing one extra damage. But it doesn't matter because we did two ablate of health, so that's now discarded. Which means he's back to his normal health now, so that's a start, I suppose. Um, yeah, I think I think that's it. That is his turn. So it's a shame, really, but I don't even have my weak attack card to try and swing at him while he's right next to me. I'm just going to go try and save that, that victim slash meeple. I'm going to play a sprint. We're rolling three dice still. We got two conditionals and one success. Do I want to get rid of anything? I don't. No, I, I will take the one success. So for one time, which again, I keep forgetting to reset at the top of every turn, we can move two spaces. I'll go one, two, right here. Then I shall play another sprint card. Get them back in the shop. Ooh, a failure and two conditionals. I will cost, or I will, I will spend two time in order to get full rerolls. A success and two conditionals. Three time left. We can move twice. That's perfect, actually. So I'll spend one time then. Gives me two for the turn. We can move twice. We grab this victim and leap out the window, Friday the 13th, the video game style, to get down here and we rescue them. What can I give myself for that? Two time, two time or an action card worth two time from the shop for free. I'll take the two time, thank you. So that puts us back up to four for the turn. We're still, we're stuck outside the house again. I'll play a walk card, I guess. I'm gonna keep one in hand this time, but I'll play this walk card. One success, that'll take that one space. That puts us right back at the door, facing down hands who's standing in the foyer. And that's my turn, so we can go to a shop. So got a few free cards Ooh, there we go so you can sort of see it so our focus focus short rest weak attack back in hand we have three to spend I shall buy Ooh, what shall we buy for three let's buy a search card because at some point I need to find a weapon <laughs> it didn't really work out well for me last time but whatever so the retaliate goes back in the shop the other close call goes back into the shop now the two sprints go back into the shop, and the one free card I spent that turn, which was a walk, goes into the shop. So Hans still has no base movement, so he's not doing anything where he is, we just go straight to drawing a terror card. It is one related to him, horrific hammer rush, if there are no victims on the board, no there is. So he targets the closest victims, which are the two ghost hunters up there. He moves towards them twice and attacks twice, for each victim killed raise the horror level, so let's put that to one side. So he's currently moving just one. So one movement and he gets to them unfortunately he attacks twice so he kills them both so both special ghost hunters that means the one left alive at least i can save now raise the horror level for each one killed we've lost our third dice back down to two and that's it right for each item killed oh and it would raise bloodlust by two ah uh, which means the horror level goes up again so it's up to three and we reveal his minor dark power He's also doing three damage and moving two now. So his minor dark power is feed. For every victim that hands kills, he recovers health. 
and there's only one victim left on the table, that ain't so bad, I suppose. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> Alright, this is this is a very swingy one this time. It's going backwards and forwards with what looks like an easy win, and then all of a sudden something happens. Well, now that I've got a taste for having three dice, I'm going to try and get back to three dice. We'll play a focus card to start the turn. Come on now. One success, I'll take it. So one time for one horror level. We need that result again on the other focus card, and I'm back to three dice. Let's see. Ha! I don't have any close calls. We have to take the failure. It just costs us two time. That's bad. Hmm. Well, in that case, we shall just take a walk. There's not much else I can do this turn, honestly. A conditional success. I'll get rid of a short rest and a weak attack. We're not going to be using them. Oops, as I throw them away. So that's going to be one time for one movement. Right, just double check. One space, one time. Yep. And we'll just come back in the house like that. So we're in the foyer. We're ending with a guard and a search in our hand. And two time to spend, which is not great. We do get back the, the walk card. One walk card. And two time to spend. Let's take a sprint. Because I need to move around the mansion faster. Or the manor, sorry. To get to them. And then the cards go back into the shop, all the free ones, so walk, focus, focus, short rest, weak attack. Not a great turn there for us, unfortunately. Well, hand still isn't moving, so straight to the terror card. I think there's two left after this one. It's a fake! Discard a random item. If you have no items, discard and draw the next terror card. So you know, presumably you don't do the rest of this card then, because the discard is above it. So, well that's both good and bad, I guess. There is one card left after this one. Oh, it's a Creech Manor one. Something unholy happened in the... Roll a die, depending on the result, place the killer in that room. This could potentially be good. A five. Um, five is the closet. What are you doing in the closet, Hans? He has teleported himself up there. Which might be good. He then would attack the, the tile, and then he would target the victim or the final girl, move towards him and attack again. He's currently moving two. So, doof, doof. He is one room away from the final ghost hunter who is in that room. Didn't kill them though. So unfortunately, no cards in hand with which to get to three dice, so we'll just play a sprint, hope for the best. Come on, where's that dice luck I had earlier? Oh, it's back, in pog form. So that is move three spaces for one time. Three spaces, one, two, three, wait, one, two, yeah, it's, it's so difficult to get to that last survivor. I, I don't think I can get to her before Hans goes and kills them. Should I just go try and grab an item instead? I don't think I can save them. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. One, two, into here, and then we'll play a search. So search card. What? Okay. It's a double success. Take the top two items from the space, choose one, place the other on top, or place it on the bottom of the pile. So, trash can lid is definitely one of the options. Wait, that is the right place, right? Yeah, garage. So this ignores one damage three times. That's what those symbols mean. It can be used three times. It's a one-handed item. And then the other item we have discovered here is... Oh, a knife! Range zero does one extra damage and is one-handed. Could come in handy as long as it bleeds. I'll take the knife for now, and I'll keep that on the top of the deck so we can have a, a sword and board set up for the, for the inevitable combat against hands. So... Uh, searching there cost a time as well, so we're ending the turn with four time to spend. Come over here, these free attack cards, or free cards rather, come back in hand, so we've got six, five, no, we've got seven in hand. With four left to spend, I'm taking the retaliate. Yeah, I'm taking the retaliate for all four, and that's my turn. And we're going to see the finale after this next tarot card. Well, again, Hans is just standing there, so the final terror card is... He just keeps coming! Raise the horror level. That's annoying. I was going to try for three dice in my next turn. Targets the victim or the final girl, moves towards him and attacks. He makes it in here. He kills the final ghost hunter. Bloodlust goes up. That's it maxed out unless somehow more people appear on the map at least. So, uh, let's see. I feel like I was forgetting something there. He moved with it, he attacked, the horror level went up. Oh, right, so there's no panic phase or anything like that. There's no terror cards left in the pile, which means we now reveal his finale. That's the part I was forgetting. Let's see what the finale is this time. It's his top card here, and it is Bloodbath. 
He now double moves and attacks twice. So that means he's potentially doing four damage a turn. I'm in danger. So we know Hans is coming to get us this turn. Uh, oh, I forgot to put the search cards I spent last turn back in, or one of the searches back into the pile. They are buyable, I don't have them in hand. We're ready for him this turn though. I've got a retaliate, I've got a guard, I've got a weak attack. I don't have a search though, and I want that trash can lid to have a bit of extra defense. So we're gonna focus on trying to get back to three dice for him coming after us. So, focus. Didn't mean to pun, kind of. Uh, I'll just I'll spend the one time, we'll lower it by one, that's fine by me. And we'll play the other focus, to try and get it to three dice. I have to condition it, I have to, what can I get rid of? We don't need short rest, and we don't need walk, one walk, but that leaves us with the other one. So that is one time for another one horror, which means we're back to rolling three dice, which is what I want for when we have to fight him. So we've got a retaliate, a guard, a weak attack, and a walk in hand, and we have four time left to spend. We know he's coming after us. Four time. I needed six to be able to buy critical blow, which does a ton of damage. We will buy. Uh, with four time. Let's see. I'm thinking a sprint maybe, and the other guard card. Oh wait, Furious Strike costs four. I didn't see it down there. And it lowers horror level if we hurt him. We need two successes though. You know what, I do. I, I do want to buy that, rather. I'm not going to read what it says on the bottom of the card because it has bad language that I'm now covering with my finger. But yeah, we'll spend all four time on one Furious Strike. And then those three cards I just all spent go back into the shop. Uh, I guess we can just do Hans' turn now because we don't draw cards. We just do the, uh, the finale action. Oh, if I could move this tripod up, sorry. He moves twice, so he's moving a total of four, and I presume he can take the shortcut, so one, two, three, four. He can't actually, I thought he was going to get to us that turn, but I guess not, because there's no drop down from, yeah, there's no drop down from there to there, so that's the fastest route to us. So that's good then, we have, we have to, I forgot to buy a search card. <laughs> I, d I just realised, well hang on a second, I was staying in there for a reason, I wanted to get the shield. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to think whether or not I want to move in on him or wait now. Alright, we're starting my turn down here because I'm not really going to have a turn. I'm going to discard two cards for two time. And there is a reason for that. I'm getting rid of weak attack and walk because I'm not going anywhere. Hands is coming after us. This is where we make our stand. That gives us two time, which gives us eight in total. We get the option to bring back our free cards. Uh, more importantly though, I want to spend that total of eight time on a critical blow and a search. Because that adds up to eight time. So I want those in hand. That gives us a total of five cards in hand. And then of the free ones, is there anything I really want back? The focus... Uh, oh, we have room for all of them actually. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I'll just take all of them then, because we have room. And that means we can discard some of them if we need to. And then those two cards I got rid of for extra time. Go in the shop. It all comes down to this. Let's just do it in editing, so you know I'm not fudging any numbers or anything like that. So, oh, again, this tripod is so stiff compared to my other one. So, hands. He moves twice, so he doesn't need to, because one is enough. He crashes through the garage door, he finds us, and he attacks twice. And he is hitting for 3 damage, because we got rid of that bonus. So for his first attack for 3 damage, I'm going to retaliate against that. And we're rolling 3 dice still. A success and a conditional success. If I don't make it a double success, some damage will get through. So let's get rid of short rest and... Focus. I don't actually think he can raise the horror level now. So yeah, I'll get rid of a short rest and a focus, turn that conditional into a double success, we block all damage and hit him for two. So that's two of his 12 health gone. He attacks again though, for three damage. So I will play the guard card I have. Unfortunately this doesn't do any damage back to him, but I'm just hoping to avoid him. Oh, those are cards I discarded, I'll just flip those over. I'm just hoping to avoid all damage here. A success and two conditional. Um, uh, you know what, I'll take the one success, so we reduce damage received by two, which means it hits us for one. So we've got four health left. I'll take that, yeah. So, those cards I played during his turn, I don't think they get discarded yet until 
the normal discard phase so they're not going into be able to be buyable until after my next buy phase unfortunately so it's just going to roll back around to my turn let me plan out how i want to do this we still have access to three dice that's the important part all right i think i'm good to go however i forgot i have seen this uh, addressed in other people's coverage by the developer if you have a weapon equipped and use retaliate the weapon applies to the retaliate so actually i did one extra damage there to hands because i don't think i had the knife in hand when i did it last time but i did there so there's one more damage from hands gone and we're just going to hit him as hard as we can <laughs> honestly that is what we're doing the best card in the game we're going to start with that it's a critical blow i need this to be amazing and you know what i'll pull back a little bit just so you can see where i'm putting the cards there we go even though it's dramatic they're just having this showdown in the garage a success and two conditionals let's see I'll get rid of a walk and a focus to make it two two successes, which means oh yeah, we're back to six time. We don't lose any time for doing this. We hit him for three and lower the horror level by one. So we hit him for three. He's got one, two, three, four, five. He's got six health left, counting that special final health that might give him like up to three more. We're getting there. So I have two cards in hand. Um. The Furious Strike has a chance to end my turn, so we're going to play the Search. I'm trying to give myself some defense, because otherwise he's just going to kill us and there's not much I can do about it. I can buy one Guard card. That's, that's what I can do at best. Two successes, I'll take it. So we get the Trash Can Lid as an option, and Ancient Text. You can lose health to gain time. Nope. I'll just take the Trash Can Lid, thank you. We can have two single-handed items. So now, I'm not going to bother putting pips on it, I'll just remember. Uh, three times it ignores one damage for three attacks, which could be super significant. I have one hand, uh, one card left in my hand. It's Furious Strike. We're going all in. We're trying it. I need at least one success. I got the one success. You know what? I'll take it because I have to. So that is one more damage to hands. Uh, horror level would go down, which means in turn I gain time, one time, but my turn ends. So that's fine. We're going to the shop with seven time to spend. We get back our free attacks, weak attack and a walk. I have to buy the guard, so that puts us down at five to spend, because he's about to hit us for a lot. Um, what else would actually benefit me here? I could buy a long rest to give myself a big heal, but let's see, he's going to be hitting me for six damage. Potentially only, well, with the trash can lid that's has bought me time, if nothing else, but I might need to heal. You know what, yeah, for that five, I'm buying the, the long rest, which is the best heal in the game. So now a lot of good cards go back in the shop. Sadly, not for me to be able to purchase right now. The retaliate, the guard that I already used, the, the short rest, the two focus, and the walk as well go right in there. So now it comes down to him trying to murder us. Oh, sorry, I forgot the other cards I spent that turn as well. So Critical Blow, Fury Strike, and the Search are also back. So Hands is attacking us twice for three damage each time. I will start by playing the Guard on his first attack against us. I need this to come up good, otherwise we're dead. Aha! I shouldn't have spoke. Uh, even if it fails, we can still reduce damage by one. But I'll get rid of the Walk and the Weak Attack in my hand to make it one success, which means we reduce damage by two. The trash can lid reduces it by a further one, so we take zero from that attack. Now this is the one that's gonna matter a lot because he's hitting for three damage again. And you know what, I'll count up how many uses the shield has with that. It's got two left. Oh, I'm not rolling any dice, he's just hitting us for three damage. I reduce it by one, so he hits us for two. So we have two health left. And that is uh, our turn right there which unfortunately means we i can't really do anything with my initial turn other than play the long rest and then we go to what could be a significant buy phase for us um now this is going to come yeah i might i'll just do my turn now it's literally just playing the heal to get health back oh no we only got conditional six i think that just cost us the game right there i don't have any rerolls although actually hang on if we fail 
we can heal two, raise the horror level by two, lower, lose two time. I have to. Oh yeah, I can't quite see the the fail condition. Sorry. There's the fail condition. So we gain two health back. Horror level goes up by one. We still have three dice, so that's fine. We lose two time, and the turn ends. But the turn was over either way, so that's that's okay. It means we have four time to spend. I'm buying the retaliate for the full four. And then the free cards are back. And that is that is it. So for my turn, I'll play a focus card. Ugh, two conditionals. Um I'll get rid of a focus and a walk to make it one success to lower the horror level. Cost us one time, so we're down to five. And then for my final action, I shall hold on to retaliate and play a short rest. We are hanging on by a thread. <laughs> Although at least it's much closer, we got a single success. Heal one for one time. That's our back to full health. So I guess that's as good as I could hope for really. So we have four time to spend. Uh, um, we get our weak attack back at the very least so I can and a walk. I'll buy two guards. Two guards for the full four time. And then the all those free cards I just spent go into the shop. Didn't have anything spare to get a reroll. So we'll just keep going for Hans' turn. So he's attacking. I'm going to play Retaliate. And this is our chance to hurt him real bad. So Retaliate. We need a good result. That's good enough. Two successes. We ignore all damage. Which I think means the trash can lid doesn't need to proc. I presume. We hit him for two. He has three health left. He hits us again for three damage. I will guard this time. We'll try and protect ourselves. Two successes, we ignore all damage, so again, I presume the trash can Oh, retaliate, we did one extra damage. I mean, when we did retaliate, the knife did one extra damage. He has two health left. Oh, we're, we're so, so close, but I only have one guard as far as defensive cards go. And uh, we're going into my turn. We might as well just keep going. It'll be quick. Hmm. I can get him this turn. Or rather, we can see what his final health is. Yeah, we'll just play... Weak attack. Hope for two successes, although one would be enough. One is enough. I'll take that. So we get hurt in the process ourselves, so we lose one health. I hit him for one. The knife makes it two, which would be his final health. So we have to flip it over and see if he's actually dead. Please, 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 please. Yes! <laughs> he is actually dead. I took him out in the garage with the knife and the trash can lid. Hands falls. How much would the final girl have had? also zero she would have had no extra health as a last boost of adrenaline oh boy that was close oh we actually won we won with laurie that means we can open a thing hang on so i don't really know if creech manor was a helper or a hindrance there because honestly i think the manor killed more people than hands did that time but either way i like the storyline where maybe he didn't actually kill laurie at camp uh, not crystal lake whatever the happy trails that's the one camp happy trails dragged her back to his big old mansion somewhere in the woods and then she fought back with some other survivors if you win with the final girl you get these little envelopes with the various so you get two final girls per movie thing and if you win do not open until you have survived the game with laurie we have survived the game with laurie so i'm opening this up let us see i believe it's additional equipment it is oh with a little note Laurie's bow, range one to three, so you can't use it if you're point blank. It does one extra damage and shoot it three times. Laurie's bow cannot modify an action card and must be used without one. Ah, so you can't use it with like retaliates and whatnot. It costs one time to fire an arrow. Only Laurie can use this item. This item may only be used when Laurie is chosen as the final girl. To incorporate it into your game, simply shuffle it into the chosen location's deck of items before setup. We'd rather ensure it is present in your game. Deal out the appropriate number of item cards, less one, then shuffle Laurie's bow into the deck. Okay. So that is an option only when you're playing as Laurie, though. But next time, we will try out a different Final Girl and a different killer as well, although we'll be staying at Creech Manor. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Finally got a win. In three games, I got a win. One off camera, one on camera, and then this one. That was real close, and it had to involve a lot of dice <laughs> there. Like, dice luck going my way three times in a row really helped. Getting to the point where you can roll three dice is so helpful as well. That's what swung it, I think. Anyway, if you enjoyed, do let me know if you want to see more. Hopefully, in more long-term situation, 
I won't have to keep on just playing it on a desk that's had a, a miniature game torn down on it recently and have a proper play area. Once Marvel Zombies is finished, I think I can probably uh, use that area as a more long-term solution and it'll look a bit better as well. So let me know and uh, hopefully if you enjoyed, show your support. If you want to go above and beyond to show your support, continue, uh, continue, consider becoming a channel member or pressing the thanks button. It all helps out a lot and is reinvested in the channel, including I am interested in the, the season two stuff for this game. Like there's one based on the thing and, and some other stuff as well. It looks very own aliens. It looks very interesting. Anyway, thank you for watching. Ta-ta for now.